We have never done this on camera before. Scoot in close. Come in and make it pretty and passable. This is a game called Monologue Hotspot. You'll notice the center position has a microphone. It is something of a hotspot. As we begin, our performers will jump in the middle and begin a monologue, and as soon as one of them is inspired to tell a tale, they will jump, tap the person on the back, that person will step back, the next person will step in, and it will go on like madness. Now, all that matters is they keep it rolling with a certain amount of high energy. The only thing they need is a starting topic and one rule, which I'm about to give them. Starting topic? Ice cream sandwiches. Now, the rule is everything you say must be a true personal story. Ladies and gentlemen, in the words of Albert Einstein, shit's about to get real. So, I have this coworker, Chad, and we don't always see eye to eye, but then one day he brought ice cream sandwiches and at first I was like this dude just brought a whole box of ice cream sandwiches to work for himself That's rude. And then he shared them with all of us Every When I was in uh, middle school, we had a problem with uh, one of the kids not being able to share with the other kids So what I effectively did was during a kickball game game I uh, uh, Had he I had shared the ball with him and tossed it to him and effectively so this one time I was, cl I was playing kickball, and I, I wasn't especially good, and so, well, the outfielders decided, oh, well, let's, let's bring everybody in. That was a really bad idea for them. It was the one time I actually managed to connect with the ball at exactly... So, I loved dodgeball in school because dodgeball was this great equalizer because I was the one picked last for everything, every sport. But dodgeball, I was, pick, I was picked first. I was the best guard. No one could get past me. I could catch the ball. It, it was amazing. I, I was cool on the dodgeball court. Maybe not anywhere else, but I was cool on the dodgeball court. And the day I figured out that I was really cool was whenever I was in uh, seventh grade and I was wearing all the band t-shirts that I could possibly find around with my friends. Like we would go to the local head shop that would also be selling other paraphernalia and stuff. But I would always focus directly on those band shirts because they were what I actually wanted to get as a youth. Because they had all my favorite bands such as Marilyn Manson and Nine Inch Nails and Tool and like White Zombie and then some other good ones that I would just have to like... So when I was in high school my friends and I decided we would actually like start a band. Right? None of us could play any instruments or sing or not had written any songs or anything, but we were totally going to get a band and we were going to have a van and we were going to have things written on the van and then we were going to make t-shirts that had the same things that were written on the van. Like, find your... So as the singer of the band, I thought, what the heck are we going to name ourselves? I'm just sitting there with my ice cream cone and ice cream sandwiches just thinking, what kind of band name would... Dude. Ice cream sandwiches. That's a great name for a band. No one's ever heard of it. It's easy to remember. And so that's when I, I, where I really started to come into my own in high school was I just kept naming bands for people that would never actually start bands. Uh, and it was, it was, it was very interesting because uh, I was also in a band. We all had, we had all the members, but we've never played a single note of music. It was, it was pretty awful, but I can I tell all my friends like, oh yeah. The first note I ever remembered memorizing as a musician was the C note because it was at 440, A equals 440, so you just hit the C note and then on a keyboard if you go up and you get to learn, you start memorizing all the notes, you go C, D, E, F, G. C note was never one of my nicknames, but C and money was definitely my gangsta name. <laughs> True story. So I'm broke. And it, it, it's a really rough time because, you know, I, I you, you got to do what you got to do to make ends meet. <laughs> You're welcome. So I was broke. I hadn't been working for about three months. I was to the point where the only food I could actually afford to eat was peanut butter sandwiches. As it happens, my good friend Connor also happened to have a 30th birthday party that would eventually go to the Italian restaurant that I couldn't afford to buy. So 
I show up just to say hello, and the magnanimous, wonderful people I know said, you're not going anywhere. You're going to sit down and you're going to eat something because we're going to feed you because that's just how much we care about you. Now sit down and shut up and put food in your face and then maybe really awkward things will happen later. <laughs> the, the, So, this one time, Johnny came to my birthday party. <laughs> awkward, awkward things happened because Johnny has strange... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the stage falls!